Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company, and today we're gonna to talk about what to plant in August. Now, before I get into that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. All right, so it's August in your garden, and you're looking around, you're looking at your spent crops, all these things that you've been harvesting for weeks and weeks and weeks, things that are diseased, things are, that are not looking good, and you're thinking to yourself, well, what do I plant next? Or in another scenario, maybe you're kind of late to the game and you just now got your garden up and going and it's August and you're thinking, what do I plant in August? Okay, well, I'm gonna give you all the details and what you need to know for that. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about zone nine and 10 first, okay? The beautiful thing about living in zone nine and 10 is summer is not over yet. As in other parts of the United States where summer is winding down, we're really kind of in the middle of our summer. You could, you could think of it that way. And that's because we don't get an early frost if we get any frost at all. And we still have plenty of frost-free, warm days that we can grow crops. Now, right now, if you're planting in your garden, you're really gonna be thinking about succession planting. And that means planting crops that you may have already planted over again because maybe they're spent, maybe they're diseased, maybe they have just puttered out. Some things that you can very easily succession plant are bush beans. So simple, they grow very easily and it's likely that if you planted these in the spring, they've probably already given you more beans than you even wanna eat and they're starting to putter out. Well, it's time to rip those babies out and direct sow more beans directly in the ground. And then you'll get some towards the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. So very easy crop to grow. Another one that's probably not looking so great is your zucchini or your squashes. It's likely that if you planted those in the spring, they have given you tons and tons of zucchini. You've been giving them to neighbors and friends and you've been making zucchini bread. And now the plants are really not looking great because They've really given their all and, and they're about done. Well, you can rip them out and you can direct sow any squash again and get another crop before days get too short and too cold. Okay, so we got a squash plant here and this was actually succession planted, meaning that I had a whole row of squash in this area and it gave me tons and tons of squash. They weren't looking good, I ripped them out. I actually started them again and here they are in their beautiful, um, immature or, or I would say kind of teenager stage. I've got my first squash happening right here. Very excited about that. So these look great. Now, if yours don't look like this, if they've given you tons of squash, they're starting to get lots of powdery mildew and just look really diseased, it's time to pull them out of the garden and replant because you don't want to keep diseased plants in your garden for too long. It can infect other plants and it's just not a part of good garden hygiene. Now move over here to these beans. You can see I've got these gorgeous uh, pole beans and they have given me so many beans. It's really incredible. They're still giving more and more and more and more. Now, if I wanted to harvest all of these, I could. I could harvest them all and start all over or I can leave them on here so that they can dry and then I can use them as dry beans. So beans are a great crop to succession plant in late summer in areas that don't get an early frost because they, they can easily be put directly in the ground. You can plant the seeds, plop, right into good soil. They will ger germinate very quickly in the warm soil and they will give you a crop very quickly. It's not something that you need uh, um, many, many months to grow. They're very quick, very easy, easy to grow. And you can really just let them go wild until your first frost comes and then harvest any dry beans that you can use in soup in the winter time, which is really great. So another great plant to succession plant in August are things like cucumbers. Now what's great about cucumbers is again, I don't know if you're noticing a theme here, they can easily be direct sown into the soil. They will germinate very quickly in warm soil and they grow quickly and happily in the, in the late summer temperatures and we'll give you tons of fruit. You can see here, ah, look, I got a baby right here. I got a baby right here. Boom. Mm. Yep, delicious. Now who doesn't want cucumbers all the way until October, right? I do, I want them year round, which is kind of hard to do, but you definitely can grow them well into the fall in zone nine or 10. Now let me chew this. <laughs> Before I choke. Ah, ah, ah. 
Okay, so the theme of what you can plant in August, when we're talking about veggies in zone nine and 10, are things that you can easily direct sow in the ground and they don't need five to six weeks prior to the warm season to get up and growing. So something that's not a great idea to plant at least from seed right now would be something like tomatoes. By the time you start the seed and you get them up and growing, it's gonna be pretty late in the season. Now it's not impossible because you can grow tomatoes all year round almost in San Diego County and zone 10 specifically, but they're really gonna be low in productivity, they can be diseased, and as the days get shorter, the sun gets lower in the horizon and we have less sunlight during the day, they're just gonna really drop in productivity. So what you wanna focus on are plants that you can easily direct sow into warm, moist soil, things that are gonna grow quickly and happily and give you a crop before we really start noticing those cooler fall temperatures. Now, I've been blabbing on and on about zone nine and 10, because that's where I live, that's where I garden, that is where the, the wealth of my expertise lies. But if you're in a different zone, if you're in eight, seven, six, all the way up to the North Pole, it's gonna be a little different for you right now because you do have a first frost date. That is an incredibly important date for you as a gardener. And what you wanna do is look at that date and backtrack to August and find out how many days of growing do I really have? That's gonna dictate what you can plant now. Now I know some of my friends up in zone seven, they're already thinking about their cool season crops. They're actually starting them in seed inside to get them up and growing so that they can plant them outside to get broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower before they get a foot of snow. So very different than us here in Southern California, but the point is, is August still should be a time where you're enjoying every bit of, of uh, goodness that you have in your garden. If you're in zone nine and 10, you're succession planting, and you're starting to think, just starting to fantasize a little bit about cool season crops. Now, a little bit of a catch 22 for succession planting in August. If you have a smaller garden and you have limited amount of space, think critically about what you're gonna plant in August because it might take up prime real estate that you're going to need in the fall. So if you need that bed for things like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all of your cool season crops, then you might wanna think very carefully about what crops you put in now in August because they're gonna grow well into October happily in that garden bed and take up prime real estate. Now, if you're thinking, you know, I don't want any more cucumbers. I don't want any more squash. I am tired of beans. That is A-OK. -okay. You can spend this month in the garden doing things like weeding, amending, getting your soil tested if you're not sure if you have good fertility, trimming back plants, um, you know, flowers and herbs and perennials that are in your garden, doing all that garden maintenance that hasn't happened because you've been too busy harvesting. That is perfectly a good way to spend your August, as long as you take a little bit of time to make it to the beach and back. That is something that you can do in zone nine and 10 to take care of your garden goodies. Now, if you are still unsure, or if you watch this video and later you need a refresher on what to do in August, make sure you get our planting calendar because every single month in that calendar, it tells you what you should be doing, what you should be planting, what you should be harvesting, what kind of garden maintenance you should be taking care of, everything you need to know for zone nine and 10 to be a really great gardener.